Good evening, everyone. I hope you are doing well tonight. Wolfram, thank you, as always, for doing the mod stuff and keeping on top of that. Good evening, Chris Rowland. And we will let the people kind of come in. I know that there is so many, there are trials upon trials going on. And so if other people are elsewhere, I know there's the Karen Reed stuff going on. And I think there is the Daybell Dingus Dingleberry case. So, you know, it is all the things everywhere. So no shame if you are on the replay crew. I love you just as much. And thank you for watching. I hope everyone has had a wonderful day. If I already said that, I'm sorry. Uh, news flash slash warning for everyone. Yes, you may come in, uh, Teddy O'Hearn and JKD Buck, mom of 10. Welcome. Yes. So just a, a little, um, you know, warning slash caution for the show. I. It has not been a great leg day, so I may be a little bit less readerly than normal because sometimes when I'm having not such a great day with my leg, my brain seems to just go, which works. But I am not big into sports ball, but this is pretty big news. The Yankees voice, John Sterling, is retiring immediately due to health concerns. Good evening, my mama in Phoenix and Squid Pro Quo and T. Underwood. I hope you all had good days. And T. Underwood, take those lawn breaks. Make sure to hydrate. Do not drink pop. I am working on giving it up, but dear Lord, not today. <laughs> John Sterling has reached the end of his illustrious career um, as the Yankees play-by-play -play announcer, the longtime Yankees radio voice is retiring effectively immediately, the team announced Monday afternoon, and he will be honored with a ceremony on Saturday night at Yankee Stadium. Sterling is 85, and he's retiring due to health concerns, the Atlantic reported. Quote, I am, very, I am a very blessed human being, Sterling said in a release. I've been able to do what I wanted, broadcasting for 64 years. As a little boy growing up in New York, as a Yankees fan, I was able to broadcast the Yankees for 36 years. And it's all to my benefit, and I leave very, very happy. I look forward to seeing everyone again on Saturday. What a wonderful attitude. What a, a humble kind of self, not self-aggrandizing attitude. I mean, what an actually really classy kind of statement. We've we've kind of, you know, it's sad when you are shocked when you get a really classy statement from someone anymore. Good Lord. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I've got I've got fun stories uh, sprinkled in, but I'm sure that will be uh, for tomorrow's morning news, unless it's spicy, then it will be the members only premiere. And then it should, after 24 hours, go to everyone. Because I totally understand in this economy, not being able to afford memberships to all the people that you like to watch. So I try to do, I'm, I'm going to attempt to do more members videos, but make them, I don't know, released to the public after 24 hours. I don't know. It's computer magic to me. The Yankees offered Sterling a chance to work in a reduced role, but it appears he will walk away altogether. Sterling has cut down on the amount of games he calls in recent seasons, and he does not travel as often due to health concerns. Justin Shalaki, Shakalil, 37, and Emmanuel Barbary, 24, are Sterling's replacements on WFAN. Yankees radio will never be, will never quite sound the same without the signature voice, wit, and humor of John Sterling. WFAN said in a statement, to generations of Bronx Bomber fans, he was the beloved compa companion that you heard, John, you knew it would, you heard John, you knew it was time for baseball. Though he never wore pinstripes, except, of course, for his tailor suits, 
Uh, he was one of the most colorful personalities in Yankee history and in all of New York uh, City Radio. All of us at WFAN tip our cap and salute our colleague and friend on a truly iconic career. Sterling has been the voice of the Yankees since 1989, a stretch that w has included five World Series championships. He's been calling the games alongside Susan Waldman since 2005, which was when Michael Kay became the TV play-by-play -play broadcaster for Yes Network after years of being paired with Sterling on the radio. Sterling's humor... Our Sterling's home run call, which any reader can hear in his or her head upon seeing it in print, is, it's high, it's far, it's gone. <laughs> oh, goodness, good pro quo. Yeah, you get some sleep, you, you take care of yourself, that is so important. Self-care, take care of yourself. You can't... You cannot fill others' cup if your pitcher is empty. And boy, have I had to learn that the hard way a bunch of times. Because I don't listen. I'm a little hard-headed, if you will. These glasses are annoying me today. Usually I like my fake glasses. Uh, fans find a certain comfort in the daily rhythms of baseball. Day in and day out, season after season, and city after city, John Sterling used his seat in the broadcast booth to bring the Yankee fans the heartbeat of the game, employing an ortund voice and colorful personality that were distinctly and unmistakably his own. The Yankees said in a statement, John informed and entertained, and he exemplified what it means to be a New Yorker with an unapologetic and boisterous style that exuded his passion for baseball, broadcasting, and the New York Yankees. In an interview with The Atlantic earlier this month, Sterling responded to, quote, not very, when asked how much longer he plans to call Yankees games, though he didn't have a set retirement date. Obviously, I'm near the end, he told the website. I've been on the air for 64 years, and I'm so tired of traveling. The games are fine. They're easy. I'm with him. <laughs> traveling is a bunch of backing and anxiety, and then you get there and you can relax, sort of. But then that last day of vacation, you know there's just Mount St., you know, vacation laundry that you're going home to and you're like I'll just run away I'm gonna join the circus so what a wonderful classy way to retire I I hope that he gets to enjoy some time with his family I hope his health concerns clear up um now in other news for someone who might have health concerns coming very shortly a man balances a running lawnmower on his chin for 9 minutes and 15 seconds. Y'all, why did I see my youngest most feral trying this in about 6.2 seconds, which is why I turned the daggone screen off when he came into this room and I was looking at stories because I was like, oh, heck no, we are not giving that child any ideas. But this man apparently saw a lawnmower and thought, hey, I've got a chin. I bet I could hold that up there while it's going. His wife is so proud. An Idaho man balanced a running lawnmower on his chin for 9 minutes and 17 seconds to break a Guinness World Record. I, Y'all, I mean this in all seriousness, no sarcasm whatsoever, and I cannot more clearly articulate this, but what in the actual flipping pancakes... Are, are you telling me that someone else, some other dingus, put a running lawnmower on their chin? Y'all, this is why mamas drink. This is why mamas drink. Because <laughs> somewhere around here is his mom thinking, I don't even know where I went wrong. I, have, I, I don't even know. The boy ain't right. I need to figure out how to clip um, little scenes because I, I need that. The Peggy, it's 7 a.m. and the boy already ain't right. <laughs> Just for this. David Rush, who is on the quest to hold the most concurrent Guinness World Record titles, previously attempted the record about four years ago. 
but his time of three minutes and 52 seconds was disqualified because the lawnmower did not have a bag on it. Yeah, darn you, sir. How are you cheating without having a running lawnmower with a bag on it? Who thinks these up? And how much um, pharmaceutical help do you have? Because holy fazolis, what is going on with people? The record was increased in the meantime to seven minutes and two seconds by a fear fellow serial record breaker, Ashrata Furman. Rush finished his attempt at nine minutes and 17 seconds short of his goal of 10 minutes, but enough to take the title. The record brought Rush Rush's total concurrent titles to 165, bringing him closer to overtaking Silvio Saba, who currently holds 180 uh, titles. For the love of all that is Cheetos, uh, y'all, no, no. Come over here to Mama Mo. Find a better goal. Oh my gosh, you could have made a deck or, you know what, never mind. I am a hot mess. Live your life. You know, balance all sorts of dangerous things on your chin. I'm sure it'll go great for you. I'm not your mama. I care for you as a person, but you know what, sir? You go fly that flag as high as it go, just a flapping in the wind. You get all them records. Good Lord. The FBI has opened a criminal investigation into the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore. You know, why make the headline if the headline's always the first sentence of the story so i just sound like i'm repeating myself or you read a repeat sentence it just redundancy when it's not needing needed bothers me y'all have tangent mo this is going to be all the squirrels <laughs> yamaha it, a record is a record you're going for the nail gun absorption godspeed uh yamaha biker i don't know that that's a great idea but as not your mom and or life guru, um, practice all things with caution. Uh, let's see. The FBI has opened a criminal investigation on the container ship that took down Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge last month, looking to determine if the ship's crew left the port, knowing that the vessel was troubled. Officials are reviewing the events that led up to the massive 980-foot-long Dolly container ship colliding with one of the Key Bridge's support pillars. Two U.S. officials with knowledge of the matter told the Washington Post. The FBI is present aboard the cargo ship Dolly conducting court-authorized law enforcement activity, the agent said in a statement Monday morning. Well, as long as it's court authorized, you know, they, they kept FISA going. So congrats on that, getting that court authorization. It's not like they don't rubber stamp a lot of stuff for y'all. The FBI did not comment further on their investigation. The early morning collision collapsed the key bridge, a vital route of local traffic where eight people were working on repairing potholes overnight. The construction crew fell into the water. Six members died while two survived. And y'all, I, I don't know what your beliefs are, but those families, I mean, they are still in shock. The thoughts, prayers, mumbles into the universe, you know, they really are going through the worst thing that can ever happen to someone. So my heart goes out to them. The massive container ship capable of carrying nearly 1,330 tons, I'm sorry, 130 tons of cargo took down the 47-year-old bridge just before 1 a.m. Lizard people. That's how, look, I'm going full Dale Gerbil. I'm going Rusty Shackleford on this. But... I'm just saying maybe there's footage of the other grassy knoll in there and or all the soil that they took out of Palestine, Ohio. Lizard people is my guess. Or those alien, um, you know, podling things that, you know, the face huggers get it. I'm guessing one of a couple of them. 
this is how this is how zombie apocalypse has started. I'm just telling you. Uh, let's see here. So we all know that the bridge crashed. I mean, it was kind of. Let's see. Horrifying video ahead of the crash shows the ship's power flickering on and off just moments before the collision, which sent the bridge instantly crumbling into the water. The ship also caught fire, sending thick black smoke across the big busy harbor. Two quote unquote deficiencies were flagged across 27 inspections of the ship since it was built in 2015, most recently in June 2023. The container ship was last inspected on September 9th, 2023 by the U.S. Coast Guard in New York, and no deficiencies were reported at that time. The FBI's investigation is separate from the probe underway from the National Trans... There are two government agencies there doing governmenty things. The amount of paper you know, trees unalived for the layers of bureaucracy and BS we have. I'm just saying. I'm in a mood. But the uselessness that you have two different... I understand they cover different things. I, I get the logistics of it. I just... We've all seen... Not to be using it in poor taste, but we all see have seen the construction crew with the one guy working and the 85 other people looking at him work which i get there are some times in a project where only one person can do something but why does it seem like it is continual <laughs> i live in indiana the land of corn and potholes we just cannot figure it out there are some roads that i'm like we're gonna need new tires <laughs> Uh, President Biden and Maryland Governor West, uh, Governor West Moore have both said they intend to hold any parties that were deemed liable accountable for the incident. Good luck with that. You know how you need to catch them. You call them and tell them about their, their vehicle's limited warranty running out. And then they'll try to hang up and you'll be like, no, actually, seriously, I'm just the FBI. I mean, just for giggles, I would do that, which is why I'm not Clarice from, from you know, Silence of the Lambs. In sadder news, four are arrested on murder charges in the mysterious disappearance of two mothers apparently abducted while, while on their way to pick up kids, cops state. So these are the um, four innocent until proven guilty, but... I mean, if I'm going to make assumptions, well, they're not going to be pretty. Cops in Oklahoma have arrested four people in the mysterious disappearance of two mothers reported missing two weeks ago and believed not to be alive anymore. Veronica Butler, 27, and Jillian Kelly, 39. And y'all know you are wrong for, for Jillian Kelly, allegedly. Allegedly. But but listen to listen here. Jillian Kelly, as far as I can understand from the the facts of this case, was the pastor's wife that leaves children behind. Both of these women leave children behind, kind of implied in the mom thing there, but but you unalived a woman who was simply helping another woman because she was scared to go pick up her kids alone. That is some darkness in y'all's soul, and you need to figure that one out. Oh, they did find the remains? Oh, how terrible. How terrible, but it sounds awful, but now the family knows what happens. And it doesn't make the grief any easier. It doesn't make any of this horrible stuff that you have to stomp through with grief. But the, they'll have they'll have someone to give a proper you know, sending away and they'll be able to give them a respectful and dignified burial, which is sad that that's some of the very little we can do here on earth to give them comfort. Okay, sorry. Veronica Butler, 27, and Jillian Kelly, 39, were traveling on March 30th from southern Kansas to pick up children in rural Oklahoma, but never made it. 
According to Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation, authorities found their abandoned car along Highway 50 or 95 and Road L in Texas County, Oklahoma, near the border with Kansas. The disappearance was considered suspicious and evidence indicated foul play. News Nation. Um, so right now it's about a level with you guys. My pain level never goes down to zero. Usually it's at a four or a five. So kind of a, a nagging, low-grade, throbbing headache. It's there. You feel it all the time, but it, it you, you can power through. Right now, I'm at a seven or an eight. I'm going to do this show. I will send you all to Shizzy, but I will not be joining him tonight. I'm going to take some medicine and go to sleep. Uh, let's see here. News Nation, citing unnamed sources, reported cops found the car about a thousand feet across the road. And thanks for asking. It's, I, I hate to make my shows about me, but I do want to give you guys a heads up when I may not be as sharp, you know, so. Oh, I'm so sorry. Hopefully, you know, this will help soothe you and then by all means, never listen to, there are some really good, um, audio, like relaxation stuff on YouTube. I don't know if that, that helps you. I only, I find, I find some of them have those screaming bowls in them and I have to turn it off. It, it does. The only, um, so I've come to to accept and I'm trying to be more realistic with my body. So I do know that I'll be in for probably tomorrow and the next day, kind of still fuzzy pain hangover kind of thing. Thank you so much, Tammy. So, and welcome Torhid. Thank you all the way. And I probably Torhild, I've probably just massacred your name and I'm very sorry. I am hella bad with names. <laughs> phonics, what are those? I am a grammar spelling phonics outlaw. <laughs> News Nation citing unnamed sources reported cops found the car about 1,000 feet off the road. The car had a small amount of blood in it, and there were, quote, puddles of blood, end quote, outside the vehicle. Butler and Kelly, who are on their way to pick up Butler's kids, are believed to have been, well, taken out with a force multiplier. The outlet reported, a large-scale search has yet to find Butler and Kelly's body, but you guys in chat said they did find them. On Saturday, police arrested 43-year-old Tad Burt. His name would be damned. Which one of you is Tad? I'm going to need tad to step forward because what in the ever loving what what's that short or short for tadler tiddler good lord in heaven it is like the entire family of the clampets and look i am i am a hill chuck i am a hillbilly so i can make fun of them because oh lord oh top left is tad you know, those glasses just don't go with the beard. Unless he's trying to be a hipster. Good Lord. An unaliver and a hipster is just, it's too terrible to imagine. 54-year-old Tiffany M Makel Adams, 50-year-old Cole e Earl Twombly, and 44-year-old Cora Twombly. Why do you have to mess up the name Cora? I had a grandma named Cora. They're all facing two counts of first degree unaliving, two counts of kidnapping, one count of conspiracy to commit murder in the first degree, authorities said. News Nation reports Adams is the paternal grandmother of Butler's kids and Cullum is Adams' boyfriend. The outlet also reported that Butler and the kid's father were in a custody dispute and she had filed a petition with the court to have more visitation with the children. The search for Butler and Kelly continues. Obviously, it doesn't now. We know that they found the body. It, you know, the, it really is. And then if, 
and I'm not going to say men don't do this. It's just in my experience of motherhood, and this is just me, so I am not dogging on men at all, but I have seen that my husband will be able to relax and go to sleep when he's sick, and I still push through because I can't relax if there are certain things left undone. So if if that's your baseline, just going through and getting stuff done, oh, well, awesome. <laughs> just imagine it's elegant and not Appalachian. <laughs> but thank you. Um, but it is it is hard to gauge pain. And then if if you've always just kind of pushed through, it's a bit. I was told by a nurse to always add two to my pain because I apparently have a really high tolerance. <laughs> so it's weird. It's so weird. You don't know until you know. In a bit of happier news, a nearly 110-year-old time capsule was found in a ceiling in a Michigan home. A repair project at a Michigan home led to a surprising discovery, a time capsule of items dating back more than 100 years. Uh, Jesse Lech had hired a crew for repair work after the heater failed in his Grand Rapids home, but the workers had to cut through the bathroom ceiling where they found a stash of items. Just basically, they were cutting into the ceiling above the bathroom it wasn't in a box it was just all this stuff kind of set into a pile basically uh, jesse told wzzm tv the 12 items and in found inside the ceiling included a handwritten note with a drawing a tiny cast iron pan a small percussion instrument a marble a couple of dominoes a picture of jesus and a news clip paper clipping from 1915 I knew this place was built in 1910, so it's just a really old building, and it made me think about, you know, obviously some kid living here thought this stuff was important to stick around for the next guy, Jesse said. Demolition crews tearing down the Richmond Mall in Forest Acres, South Carolina, found a time capsule of their own last month. Officials said the capsule will be buried when the mall or the officials say the capsule buried when the mall opened in 2000 will be reburied in a park set to replace the mall until its scheduled opening in 2033. Good evening, WH or JWH78. Welcome. So, you know, that's pretty cool. It is interesting to think about what my kids would put in a time capsule. I don't know that Skibbity Toilet is going to resonate as much as a picture of Jesus. <laughs> or Roblox. Y'all, I am about to lose my... Look, this might not be a popular opinion, and I don't tend to give my, my general hot takes, but I'm getting a bit tired of these people that are blocking roads. Look, I get it. You have a different opinion on the things that are going on over in Mesopotamia. Feel free to, you know, voice your concerns as an American citizen, but don't make me sit on the freeway because you are going to have one hot, angry, mad mama on your hand. Not to mention the ambulances, the police officers, the actual critical, you know, transportation that you are cutting off so that you can make a big old to do. I would, you know, what would, would convince me more to take your side is if you had a calm, rational debate with someone and you may, you persuaded me. Other than that, I, I don't want to hear it. You're acting like spoiled children. Nothing America do, does is going to stop what is a centuries-long Mesopotamia. JW is fine. Thank you. I can't do letters and numbers today for some reason. 
Anti-Israel protesters shut down San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge in both directions for hours Monday, while also creating traffic jams for drivers trying to reach Chicago's O'Hare International Airport. Y'all, this is what I see happening. You're going to get someone that's just going to just going to have that really bad day or that absolutely necessary thing that they have to go do or you know their wife is in labor on you know getting ready to give birth on the golden gate bridge you're going to get someone who is going to speed through one of these things either just being irritated or you know being needing to get somewhere for a serious emergency and yeah or the moms and dads that are trying to pick up their kids from daycare getting charged five dollars a minute for everything late again i would be i would be much more willing to hear your side which i don't always agree with but i'm always willing to hear and listen and maybe think hmm is that a perspective that i just hadn't thought of before or well that still doesn't line up with anything i think so i'll just but it it uh for the love of all that is holy y'all this is not the way to persuade people this is the way to irritate and anger people and make sure they never come over to your cause I'm throwing it out there. I don't tend to give good life advice because I am a hot mess express, but I'm telling you, you are going to get one crazy person and then people are going to go nuts. So uh, let's see. The Golden Gate Bridge is closed in both directions for an undetermined amount of time, the San Francisco Department of Emergency Management said in a statement early Monday afternoon, citing a civic demonstration. Y'all are so lucky I am not the mayor of San Francisco because y'all y'all would be peaceably detained and then your hind ends would be dropped off at a park where you can peacefully protest there. It says you have the right to peacefully protest. It doesn't say you have a right to be an utter jerk face dingleberry and, and mess up everyone else's lives because of your beliefs. Uh, let's see. Expect delays and use alternate routes. The bridge reopened again in both directions by late afternoon. Dozens of anti-Israel activists had stopped their vehicles on the southbound lanes of the framed California span starting around 7.30 a.m. to demand the end of U.S. support. The move came hours before hundreds of more protesters decided to be dingleberry doofuses. D did none of y'all have jobs? I mean, how in the heck did all of you get free at the same time? I mean, some mama's basement just must be getting fumigated right now. And yes, I'm making odd ad hominem attacks, which I generally don't try to do. But y'all are just taking me the hell off with this. Don't be, don't be a, a pain in the ass if you want me to listen to your, your, don't be a Pima, if you will. That's short for pain in the ass. No, yeah, pain in my ass. Don't be a Peter. Don't be a pain in the ass. Anywho. Yeah. Just don't do it, y'all. It is not the way. Wait a minute. I can get money for that? I can make a I can make a bitchin' poster with some glitter glue and some puff paint, y'all. I'm just saying. Of course, none of them would be appropriate. And they'd be all subversive, making the the people that carry them look a bit dumb, but maybe that's probably why they wouldn't hire me. An airplane passenger was fined in Sydney for, well, relieving himself in a cup. I guess he was afraid to get out of the seat. I don't know. A passenger has been fined for, well, whizzing in a cup during a delay in deplaning after landing at a Sydney airport. The incident after a three-hour Air New Zealand flight from Auckland occurred last December and the Sydney court fined the 53-year-old man 600 Australian dollars or 395 American dollars. 
For the offensive behavior in February, officials said in Friday, the incident only came to public attention on Friday when the New Zealand News website Stuff reported that a passenger in the same row identified only as Holly said she had reported the behavior to the air crew. Okay, I was about to say don't be a snitch, but then I looked at the next paragraph and I could see why she would be upset. She said she and her 15-year-old daughter were sitting in the aisle and middle seats when the man in the window seats, whose name has not been released, was relieving himself into his, you know, big gulp. Holly said the plane had been on the tarmac for about 20 minutes waiting for a terminal gate to be located or allocated, sorry, when she heard the unmistakable sound of the passenger whizzing in the cup, stuff reported. She said the man was obviously quite drunk and spilled spilled the liquid on a flight attendant after he left the plane. Okay, yeah, that is that is a findable offense. That's that's some grossness, sir. I mean, I was going to be on your side because six kids do not a strong bladder make, but that's some grossness. That's that's just disgusting and gross. Air New Zealand said it ha does not comment on individual incidents and says it bans between five to ten customers each month for disruptive behavior, including intoxication. In probably news that you guys have already seen, but it is news and I don't know how many people actually get to watch the trials all day, a sob Sobbing rust armorer Hannah Gutierrez given maximum 18-month sentence in the fatal shooting of Helena Hunch Hutchinson. Hutchins. Wanna rust armorer Hannah Gutierrez Reese sobbed Monday as she was sentenced to 18 months in prison over the fatal shooting of Helena Hutchins, whose mother told the court, quote, time does not heal. It doesn't heal. Your grief kind of stays the same. It's this little ball, but your life expands around it. And it, yes, it's cheesy. Yes, it's from Facebook, but there is truth in that, that it doesn't go away. It does. It, it may change shape, but your life grows around it. You've been given more time to to live and learn things, unfortunately, without people that you love, but it does, your life does grow around it. So if you are in a place right now where you're struggling with loss, it still sucks all the big ones, but life, life, happiness, laughter, they come back. They do. Let's see here. Gutierrez Reed, 26, was led into court shackled at the wrist and wearing khaki jail scrubs with a light long sleeve t shirt. Several close friends and family members of Hutchins then gave emotional statements about the impact of her death, which happened on set in 2021 after Alec Baldwin fired a force multiplier, which had accidentally been loaded with a live round. Uh, Gutierrez Reed's sentences her sentence for involuntary manslaughter, the maximum possible, was then handed down by New Mexico District Court Judge Mary Marlowe Summer, who made a point of sending her to prison rather than the lesser sentence in jail. You know, this is the first time I haven't seen her looking very cocky. Uh, I will say that her new look is is very presentable but she always had a slight cockiness to her face at least in 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 my um in my opinion that's just how i read it but i'm not a body languageologist so take it with a pound of salt and or ramen noodle packet to that um she told her quote i did not hear you take accountability you said you were sorry but not that you are sorry for what you did. It was your attorney that had to tell the court you were remorseful. The word remorse, a deep regret coming from a sense of guilt for past wrongdoings, that is not you. I find that you did what you did consti constitutes a serious violent offense. It was committed in a physically violent manner. I am sentencing you to 18 months of incarceration at a woman's correctional facility in New Mexico. 
Welcome, DK Cripple. Earlier, Gutierrez Reed looked on, crying on and off as Hutchins was described as a wonderful friend and mother. Hutchins' own mother, Olga Sylvanier, cried throughout a video recording spoken in Ukrainian and translated through titles, saying, The day of her death ruined my entire life. It's heart wrenching to see her child grow up without his mother. On the night, um, Matt called to say she died. I was screaming and kept pleading with him. Time does not heal. It's two and a half years past and it gets worse and worse. Amelia Mendenita, one of Hutchins's best friends, told the court the last four words she ever said to me were, I believe in you. Those words will forever echo in my heart. I'm sorry, in my soul. Helena's death is the result of a massive system failure it all boils down to the very simple question why was there a live freedom seed on set that was where Hanna gutierrez reed failed helena it was her job to check the force multiplier to check the bullets and ensure helena was safe i do wish i could pull that off that is something i've never been able to pull off the hat and the bangs and not looking like i'm well attempting to case houses. Close family friend Stephen Metz said the incident has also completely destroyed husband Matthew Hutchins. He said Matt has been affected horribly by this and he moved away. Basically, Matt died when Helena died. Her death is a reminder of the fragility of life and has left us shaken and sad. There is really no excuse. Before Marlo Summer handed down the penalty, Gutierrez Reed begged for leniency and said her heart aches over the tragedy. I understand she was taken too soon, Gutierrez Reed said. Okay, but that's the passiveness of language that you're getting dinged on, ma'am. I understand my actions led to her being taken too soon. I, I don't... It, Again, a lot of what I've seen in court is about presentation. I wish that she was deeply remorseful, but if I were her attorney, I would have said, do not write it in passive language. You need to accept and own your BS right now. You're an adult. That's what happens when you're an adult. If you screw up, you own it, and then you stand back up. I mean, and you have to work double harder for people to trust you again. But everyone stumbles. Own your own your BS. Own it when you're being, you know, a bit of a horse's ass. Yeah, the world would be much better. Yeah, I don't like this pink suit. I get that it's supposed to be mimicking a very classic structured male suit, but it's not a color that looks good on her in my opinion, but I'm not a fashionologist. So y'all have seen what I want wear. If it's, it doesn't have a funny saying on it or, you know, a curse word, I'm just not going to wear it. Uh, however, she then went on to say that the media had painted her like a quote unquote monster and that she was young and naive when she started working on the Western movie. Ma'am, no. No. See, this is what killed Jennifer Crumbly on the stand. A, you don't make yourself a victim when someone's lost someone that's classless and gross and just you you aren't getting the point. You aren't getting the point at all that your actions and or inactions and Alec Baldwin being a giant douche canoe, you know, led to a situation where you are allowed to do whatever you want on set and you went plinking with, you know, actual working things. Again, your father was a famous armorer. Did you not pay attention to anything he did? I tell, okay, I tell my boys, this is the funniest thing I've heard in a while. So I, I remind my boys all the time because we do live in a rural area that, you know, what do you do if you ever see a weapon out, a force multiplier out on its own or out in someone's house? Do you touch it? No. You assume that it is, it is dangerous. It is dangerous and you tell an adult. You do not touch it. You do not play with it. 
Now, my youngest, most feral is like, yeah, I get that rule. But what if it's a bomb? We're kind of screwed, right? And I'm like, first of all, you're eight. Don't say that. And second of all, yes, I guess if you find one of those, we're all kind of screwed. <laughs> Look, y'all, I try. <laughs> Gutierrez Reed, who has been behind bars since her March 6th conviction, also said she didn't have time or resources to fully carry out her job. I beg you, please don't give me more time. She pled with the judge. The jury has found me in part at fault for this God awful tragedy. It was an avoidable tragedy, ma'am. Look, I know you probably won't watch this and you'll probably never hear of me, but if you happen to Hannah, Hannah, this is a big thing you're going to have to get over. You are responsible for taking the life away from someone else in part. You have to own that before you can move forward. And I know that is that is not an easy thing to own, believe me. But you are not going to start healing from this and you are not going to be, you know, it, it, you're not going to change your perspective until you really internalize that, yes, you screwed up. It's not, I'm just, ugh, ma'am. Everything you are saying right now is nails on a chalkboard to me because it's like, well, it was everyone else's. Look, ma'am, you have time to do little photo shoots for the Instagram or the TikToks or the Snapchats or the Gizmodo. I don't even know. At the trial, jurors heard evidence about how Gutierrez Reed, who, Reed, who was in charge of all of the weapons on the set of the movie flouted gun safety protocols, which allowed a live round to end up in the gun Baldwin was using for the film. Welcome, Slidey Pie, joining us from Rumble. Thank you so much. I hope you had a wonderful day. Alec Baldwin set up the situation for this to happen, didn't do oversight, didn't do his job as a producer. But if Gutierrez... Gutierrez Reed was really wanting to make a name for herself. She would have applied herself. And if she was unhappy with the safety of the film, quit. You don't want your name associated with shenanigans. It's like you're a new hire, ma'am, to life. Good Lord. Welcome, Sophia Starlin and Nanya Business and Becca Lynn. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Baldwin, 66, who is also awaiting trial on manslaughter charges, mistakenly fired off the, the Freedom Seed while rehearsing, killing cinematographer Hutchins and wounding director Joel Souza. Her lawyer, Jason Bowles, asked Marlo Summer last week for leniency. However, prosecution asked the judge to throw the book at Gutierrez Reed, who they claim still refuses to take responsibility, evidenced in jail calls in which she, among other things, insulted the jurors as idiots and a-holes. All right, sweetie, come back here. Come back here. You obviously need more Mama Mo advice. Ma'am, prison calls are recorded and can be used against you. There's a little recording at the beginning when you make your collect call to someone. You might not want to piss the people off who are voting yay or nay against you. And you know that the prosecutors are going to show that. You, you know what? If you wanted to go full adult pretender actor mode, you could have pretended to show remorse, not give a daggone about this woman, and you probably would have gotten leniency, but you're so daggone, you are suffering from cranial rectitis, ma'am. Now, once you remove said cranium from said rectal, you'll be able to understand, but you couldn't even pretend to show remorse. And and then you wonder why you got the book thrown out at you, you dingus. At Monday's hearing, Prosecutor Carrie Morrissey said, I wasn't exactly sure what recommendation would be appropriate in this unprecedented case until last week when I completed the review of Miss Gutierrez's jail calls. 
It was my sincere hope during the process that there would be some moment when Miss Gutierrez took responsibility and expressed some level of remorse that was genuine. This moment has never come. Miss Gutierrez continues to refuse to take responsibility for her role in the death of Helena Hutchins. Bowles said his no prison request was warranted because Gutierrez Reed has never committed a crime before. Well, many people have never done the one dumb thing that, you know, you know, changes their life forever before they did it. But unfortunately, ma'am, for right now, you are this moment until you own it, live up to, you know, be a big girl. It is not fun to accept that you screwed up so greatly. But take ownership of it, learn from it. And, and show genuine remorse for the people that lost something. You're just losing 18 months of your life. That little boy, you know, his mom's not going to have her first, you know, mom and son dance at his wedding. She'll never see, you know, potential grandchildren. She'll never be there to nurse him through his the first time he loses a hoodie because he gave it to his, you know, first girlfriend and didn't realize that that hoodie is never coming back. You know... All those things, all those precious moments for a mother's heart, her son is never going to have those moments. Get your head out of your behind, ma'am. You are not the victim here. Uh, and many people had vouched for her good character in the letters to the judge. Uh, and her life has been permanently altered after being catapulted into the eye of the media for over two years. Miss Gutierrez Reed has endured and will continue to endure collateral consequences far harsher than most defendants ever face. Again, don't make your client the victim when someone lost their lives. I figured this would be public relations and lawyer. Why am I the voice of reason? I am a redhead who wears a bunch of funky wigs and babbles on the internet, but I can play this better. Are y'all, I'm going to have to go to law school. I have, I am a twice college dropout. I'm going to have to become a third party intervener here. Give these people some advice on how not to look like a douchebag. Alec, look, I don't want to work with you, but I'd be willing to take your money. I will coach you on how not to be a douchebag. It's going to take a lot of lessons, and I require an advanced retainer, but I am an expert. <laughs> well, I was actually thinking of maybe starting a different channel and doing some reading stuff. Maybe start that, but... It, baby steps. Baby steps. I am working on being more accountable with members, uh, you know, material, and then I will work on another channel. The lawyer detailed how his clients had received um, not so nice threats, which caused her to fear for her and anxiety and pushed her into therapy. He said even though she opted for a trial, it did not mean that she didn't and still doesn't feel incredibly saddened and heartbroken. No, responsible for. Not saddened, not heartbroken. I was a link in the chain that unalived this woman. Why, again, why am I the voice of reason for the love of all that is holy? However, prosecutors had listed a slew of alleged misconduct by Gutierrez Reed from after her arrest. They claimed that she drank booze while out um, pending trial, contrary to her con conditions of release, encouraged her mom to confront prosecutors when they were in the bathroom at the court, and attempted to lie to prosecutors about her work history to give the impression that she was working full time prior to the trial. Alec Baldwin, where the hell did you pick this child up from? Did you just see her holding a force multiplier one day and you're like, hey, you seem to know what you're doing and you look kind of like you like hair dye. You're in. I, I mean, what the actual Schnell, Alec Baldwin, uh, any part of the trial and any part of her phone calls can show that she is just not cohesive as an adult yet. She is fully led into the kid adult stage of her life. Hopefully one day she'll, you know, spout a cocoon and come out a functional human. 
But dear Lord, where did you find this chick, Alec? I'm I'm done with her. She's she's taken me off. Not taking responsibility and owning your own crap as an adult kind of is one of my things that is a big old pet peeve. It frosts my flakes. It burns my biscuits. It scorches my grits. It really does. Ooh. Can you imagine me? But I would want to go straight to judge. If I could become Judge Judy when I grow up, you have no idea. I would be the most shenanigans woman ever on TV. Beard and mustache championships claim three facial hair chain world records. And what in all that is Walmart and holy? Attendees at the National Beard and Mustache Championships in Florida. Y'all, why, why am I not shock-faced? <laughs> Florida man in the house. The annual, or, okay, attendees at the National Beard and Mustache Championships in Florida broke three Guinness World Records for the longest chain of beards, mustache, and partial beards. That is a lot of bearded men standing close together to touch beards. <laughs> it's almost like that uh, volleyball scene in uh, in Top Gun that was in no way, um, you know, for no way like the 300 of its time. Men oiled up playing, <laughs> playing volleyball. There were a lot of women watching. <laughs> Just, I mean, it did have Tom Cruise in it, so... He has a unitooth. You cannot unsee it once you have seen it, and I'm sorry to have given you this curse, but he has a tooth right in the middle of his face, and it it will it will screw you up for the rest of it, your life trying to watch him. <laughs> the annual event, which is held in a different location each year. Oh my! Could you imagine Borowski handling that trial? I need to do some puppet work, and if I can figure out how to cut Borowski just going off, that would be a hilarious skit. Obviously, I wouldn't dress up as anyone because, but I could probably do the little paper cutout um, theater that the Hales do. Uh, the annual event is held in a different location each year by Beard Team USA, and saw participants take on three record titles on main street pier this year host in this year's host city daytona beach the facial hair fanatics first attempt on the record was the longest beard chain which was previously set at 150 feet during the previous year's national beard and mustache championships the beard sporting participants stood side by side and their facial hair was clipped together on into a six, 86 person chain measuring 195 feet and three inches long. It's them last three inches that you need. <laughs> I am so not mature. Maybe by the time I'm a grandma, I'll be way mature. Probably not. Organizers then attempted the record for the longest mustache chain. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just imagining these things mean different things else. Other places... Ignore me. I My mind has gone to 12-year-old boy. So you can imagine the humor. Organizers then attempted the record for the longest mustache chain okay, with 27 participants reaching a record-breaking length of 20 feet and 4 inches. The final record, the longest partial... What is a partial beard? So like a goatee? Are we calling... Are you are we calling a a goatee a partial beard now? What do we call a soul patch other than no? Early aughts and late 90s. I see you. We do not want you to come back. The soul patch is a no. A hell no to most people, okay? Or or just me, actually. Just me. I I have a, a rational dislike of soul patches. I just think it's dumb, but, but if you love it, absolutely keep your soul patch forever. 
Just know I will probably be staring at it and laughing internally, but it's not disrespectful to you and I'm not laughing on the outside, so give me a little bit of credit. The final record, the longest partial beard chain, involved only those participants with partial beard styles, which include mutton chops, goatees, and musketeer style facial hair. You know, there is a group for everyone. If you feel like you don't fit in, if you are having a hard time humaning, there is a group for you. And if you like to, you know, stand close to other men and it and clip your mustaches together, there is a group for you. So never feel like you are humaning wrong, that you are a weird alien, you know, sent here like Jane Goodall to study the chimps. I may have had that thought a couple times in my life. But there, there truly is a group for you. <laughs> The partial beard chain made up of 24 participants measured 42 feet and 8 inches long. All three attempts were successful. I think it looks extra crazy because it's so wacky to make a beard chain in the first place. Yeah, I'm, I'm, okay, how much beer was involved in this, in this record starting? Like, you know what we could do, Larry? I don't know, Lenny, what are we going to do? What if we you know, clipped our beards together and see who made the longest chain. And he's like, you know what, Earl? That is the best damn idea I have ever had. You have ever had. After that, we're going to balance a lawnmower on our chin. <laughs> I should look up the world's longest soul patch just to hurt my soul. But you guys... It's been about an hour, and I appreciate every single one of you guys coming here and spending your evening with me. I hope you have continue to have a wonderful evening with Shizzy. I am going to go lay down and have a wonderful evening. Try to spread a little kindness. You know, I try to pop in fun stories and with the news, but sometimes it's a little dark. So we can all, you know, try to sprinkle a little kindness everywhere we go have a look i nearly lost my I, I nearly snorted when i had to read mustache chains <laughs> i can just see these meaning very different things depending on the club you're affiliated with <laughs> i'm leaving it at that <laughs> Have a lovely evening, you guys. I will see you in the morning. Bye.